Generally, when I introduce myself to someone, I often observe a journey of facial expressions and reactions, which often includes two primary emotions, bamboozlement and intrigue. And I'm not complaining, though, because like a classic LinkedIn headline that we all have, know and love, uh, saying that I'm a contemporary classical composer, postgraduate law student, and sustainability activist, all in one sentence is the mouthful that never ceases to provide me a fun, inquisitive reaction. So hello, my name is Robert McIntyre. What the Wardle Fellowship has uniquely provided me is the novel independence to bring all three of these usually separate identities together in a multifaceted cross-disciplinary offering of my skills and lived experience. I hold a Bachelor of Music, as you know, from the Conservatorium and am currently undertaking my penultimate year in the Melbourne Law School in my Juris Doctor. So channeling my composition career through the vessel of my JD with a sustainability lens has been one of the most soul-searching and finding experiences of my life to date. Denoted as worlds colliding in a thought-provoking concept, my action project, Our Duty to Care, is a cross-disciplinary offering of legal doctrine being the notorious case Sharma and the Minister for the Environment, translated through musical composition. This was then world premiered by musician Solstice Trio and Bridget Kelsey in my first fully self-curated and directed concert in April, amounting to a huge amount of professional and leadership development. With fellowship funding, I commissioned longtime friend, collaborator, and poet Savannah Wegman, a non legal mind, to materialize text from my own legal research of the case alongside her own research, such as press, articles, and video interviews of Anjali Sharma, speaking and analyzing the vernacular that she used. From this, I set this legally and sustainability informed poetry to musical life in a song cycle being a three part story of sorts covering climate anxiety, court trial excitement, and a societal general shift in focus by way of soprano voice and piano trio, which is violin, cello, and piano. You might be thinking, why on earth would you be discussing these important topics through the medium of Pratic voice and three instruments instead of a peer-reviewed, heavily referenced article to be published and dispersed, ready to be the next footnote in someone else's next article in this, wherever we're going? Well, it's exactly that, because moments like these need, to, need and deserve to be known for more than just the ripple that they become. And in that moment of Sharma, the global tide changed. Our duty to care is a perpetual cultural signifier and reminder, reflective of groundbreaking societal efforts, acknowledging that the fact that for the, despite its later appeal of the novel duty of care, for the first time in legal global history, all evidence of climate change admitted in a court of law remained uncontested. There was no governmental climate cynicism. The case, significant in its own makeup of eight courageous children and none, Sister Bridget, denoted the shift from proving the climate crisis to that of fighting it. Art is eternal, so attaching it to key societal and political moments engenders legacy. By having an 18-minute work come to life by four brilliant musicians witnessed by an audience of 200 plus people, including Sister Bridget herself, who came to the concert, all within a sustainability-minded concert is only one big fleeting aspect that still saw hundreds be introduced and potentially reintroduced to Sharma, that litigation in that night alone, including a preceding clinic event by the law school faculty. It now exists beyond the premiere, soon published and ready to be performed again by the same or even new musicians, and has also generated two commissioned pieces of graphic art by my twin sister, Lucinda McIntyre, and fellow Wattle fellow, Crystal Tang, respectively. <laughs> it will be professionally studio recorded, I'm determined, and released into the world, exponentially rekindling Sharma's exposure. You can't do that with a single article, and no one's going to go out of their way to read a 161-page court document that I did try to read fully on a Sunday morning, let alone any other day of the week, unless you're studying or being paid. I was studying, so I guess I did it. So one of the most poignant abilities of art is its global accessibility, whereas one of the most challenging aspects of the law is its inaccessibility. It has its valid reasons, though, such as having lawyers, which I clearly, as a law student, want to be. So I don't want to get rid of them. But environmental, societal, and legally grounded, groundbreaking moments like Sharma need to be heard, remembered, and remain visible. And nothing can be heard quite like music. One of the first lines of my artistic bio is that I am a composer who finds, collects, and brings awareness to moments, holding space for them in order to achieve a multifaceted sense of visibility. I only wrote that actual sentence and put it in my bio when composing Our Duty to Care in the Waddle Fellowship. And I've never felt my own multifaceted, multifaceted sense of visibility until that moment. 
I cannot thank Lynn and the fellowship enough and all the incredible people that I've worked with and supported me throughout this entire endeavor, particularly being Savannah and Bridget, Steph and Isabel as part of the ensemble. Everyone in this room clearly cares about the climate crisis. So let's do our duty to keep doing something about it. However creatively that me and how many more fellows we probably need. Thanks so much. <laughs>